Hebron base for Hebron language is the set of all ground atomic sentences that can be formed from the vocabulary of the language. Let's look at some examples. For a schema with object constants a and b, no function constants, and relation constants p and q, where p has arity 1 and q has arity 2. The Hebron base is shown here. We have one p sentence for each object constant, and we have one q sentence for each of the four possible pairs of object constants. It's worthwhile to note that for a given relation constant and a finite set of terms, there's an upper bound on the number of possible ground relational sentences that can be formed using that relation constant. In particular, for a domain of size b, there are b to the n distinct n-tuples of object constants, and hence there are b to the n ground relational sentences, sentences for each entry relation constant. Since the number of relation constants in a signature is finite, this means that the Hebron base is also finite. Of course, not all Hebron bases are finite. In the presence of function constants, the number of ground terms is infinite, and so the Hebron base is infinite. For example, in a, sing in a language with a single object constant and a single unary function constant f and a single unary relation constant p, the Hebron base consists of the sentences p of a, p of f of a, p of f of f of a, and so forth. A truth assignment for Hebron logic language is a function that maps each ground relational sentence in the Hebron base to a truth value. As in propositional logic, we use the digit 1 as a synonym for true and 0 as a synonym for false. And we refer to the tr value assigned to a ground atom by writing the atom within the name of the truth assignment as a superscript. The truth assignment i defined here is an example for the case of the language we just saw. This exercise tests your understanding of these concepts by asking you to answer some simple counting questions. As with propositional logic, once we have a truth assignment for the ground relational sentences of a language, the semantics of our language prescribes a unique extension of that assignment to the other sentences of the language. The rules for logical sentences in Hebron logic are the same as those for logical sentences in propositional logic. A truth assignment satisfies a negation if and only it does not satisfy the target of the negation. The truth value of a conjunction is true under a truth assignment if and only if the truth value of its conjuncts are both true. Otherwise, the truth value is false. The truth value of a disjunction is true if and only if the truth value of at least one of its disjuncts is true and otherwise the truth value is false. A truth assignment satisfies an implication if and only if it does not satisfy the antecedent or it does satisfy the consequent. And a truth assignment satisfies a biconditional if and only if the truth values of the component sentences are the same. In order to define the truth assignments in quantified sentences, we need the notion of instances. An instance of an expression is an expression in which all variables have been consistently replaced by ground terms. Consistent replacement here means that if one occurrence of a variable is replaced by a ground term, then all occurrences of that variable are replaced by the same ground term. A universally quantified sentence is true for a truth assignment if and only if every instance of the scope of the quantified sentence is true for that assignment. An existentially quantified sentence is true for a truth assignment if and only if some instance of the scope of the quantified sentence is true for that assignment. As an example of uh, these definitions, consider the sentence, for all x, p of x implies q of x, x. What's the truth value under the truth assignment shown here? According to our definition, a universally quantified sentence is true if and only if every instance of its scope is true. For this language, there are just two instances shown here at the bottom. We know that p of a is true, and we know that q of a a is true. 
So the first instance is true. Q of B, B is false, but then again, so is P of B. So the X second instance is true as well. Since both instances are true, the quantified sentence is also true. Now let's consider a case with nested quantifiers. Is for all x there exists a y, q of x, y true or false for the truth assignment shown here? As before, we know that this sentence is true if every instance of its scope is true. The two possible instances are shown here. To determine the truth of the first of these existential sentences, you must find at least one instance of its scope that's true. The possibilities are shown here on the left. Of these, the first is true, and so the first existential sentence is true. Now we do the same for the second existentially quantified sentence. Possible instances are shown here on the right. Of these, again, the first is true, and so the second existential sentence is true. Since both existential sentences are true, the original quantified sentence must be true as well. A truth assignment satisfies a sentence with free variables if and only if it satisfies every instance of that sentence. In other words, we can think of all free variables as being universally quantified. And finally, a truth assignment satisfies a set of sentences if and only if it satisfies every sentence in the set. This exercise tests your grasp of semantics by asking you to evaluate some Hebron logic sentences.